Fighters Pass 3 has concluded for Dragon Ball Fighters with the release of Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta. And a lot of people in the Dragon Ball community are talking about how strong Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta is compared to Dragon Ball Super characters. It's understandable, there's a dramatic finish with Super Saiyan Blue Gogeta and Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta now, and a lot of people are seeing interaction between GT and Super characters, and he's got the whole community curious. So, I thought I'd take the opportunity to make a tier list ranking how strong the fighters characters are lore-wise. Just to be completely clear, this is not their power in terms of how viable they are as tier lists. I'm taking statements, feats, and lore from the games and from the source material as long as they're not contradicted and using that evidence to come to a conclusion on how strong the characters are in Dragon Ball Fighters. Important disclaimer, I am scaling a Dragon Ball video game. For the sake of having solid feats, I will be using Super and GT feats to scale respective characters from their own franchise. This is also going to be used because there are callbacks to the source material in the game, which does imply that familiar events have occurred. This does not mean I am scaling GT and Super the anime to each other, I am merely using the anime to scale the game. And again, just to make sure everyone's 100% clear, this isn't the competitive tier list, as in how viable are the characters in terms of winning a match, this is how strong characters are in the fighters verse based on feats and lore. Just to create a little understanding so you understand why we're scaling the way we are, I'm going to be scaling super characters based on their feats in comparison to other super characters, I'm going to be scaling GT characters based on their feats and other GT characters. The two Gogetas are going to be used as the centerpiece and starting point of the tier list because their feats are shown to make them equal. Another thing I just want you to understand really fast is why I'm going to be mainly using anime feats to scale the characters. And that's because there are several references in character dialogue that imply that similar if not the exact same events have occurred. For example, in the dialogue with Super 17, from Dragon Ball Super, Gogeta talks about his interaction with Super with Super 17. So we can infer from this that Super 17 has happened and similar events have happened. Therefore, the scaling would be similar, and that's the right line of reasoning I'm using for that side of the tier list. So let's get started with the first characters on the tier list. The first characters we're going to be scaling on the tier list are Gogeta Blue and Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta. They are both going to go in the same tier and they're both relative in power. They both have a dramatic finish where they both win, they both complement each other in dialogue. The series is trying to establish firmly that these two are relative in power. Now, to be completely frank with you guys, the audience, you can technically say that Gogeta Blue is higher than Super Saiyan 4 for one reason. It's shown in the anime that Gogeta Super Saiyan 4 has a stricter time limit when it comes to the fusion. They both use the same fusion, so it's the same multiplier, they're just using different forms. But one form, the Super Saiyan 4 form, apparently limits the amount of fusion time, whereas Blue does not. Because as we saw in Broly, uh, Gogeta didn't have to use as much power, or he just didn't have to, he wasn't exerted to the extent where his fusion was lowered, or the fusion dance just doesn't have that problem. So as we can see, the, few, the Super Saiyan 4 form is way more limiting in terms of how it limits the timer, because even when Gogeta was just messing around and clowning on Omega, he lost his fusion timer because of the form. So like I said, in my opinion, Gogeta Blue definitely ranks higher, but I'll also leave it up to the audience to determine which one they want. The next character ranking is going to be really short and sweet, Jiren, in a dialogue with Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta and Jiren, who clearly states, like Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta is his equal in his oppressed state, so logically, Jiren goes right in the same tier as Super Saiyan 4. Super, Super Saiyan Blue versus Jiren is contentious, but since the two are relative in power, we can reasonably conclude that they're relative, so. You know what's absolutely wild? That it's 2021, and you still haven't subscribed to my channel. It's 2021, COVID's going around, why not give me another subscriber? So you can stay home in your homes and stay safe and social distance and watch my videos and get ring the notification bell and get all of my videos when they come out. I think you should do it. It'd be a really good thing, especially if you're liking the video. 
Alright, now we're going to start a whole new tier, but we're not going up to the strongest character in Fighters yet. We're going to be going down, and then I'm going to be establishing who the strongest character is, so hope to get there soon. So Jiren's lore establishes that even his suppressed state, which he's clearly in a suppressed state in Dragon Ball Fighters, he still has his shirt on, and he has unlocked his Super Ultra Instinct S key. He's beyond the Gods of Destruction, which means the Gogetas are beyond the God of Destruction which would place Beerus below these characters on the hierarchy, so he'd go below. And then, for Broly, Broly is stated by Goku to be relative to Beerus. He says that Beerus could defeat Broly, so we don't know for a fact that if he's stronger, relative, or maybe a little weaker, but the fact that Goku is comparing Broly to Beerus says that they are in the same weight class in terms of power. So these two characters are going to go in the same tier. We're going to put Beerus ahead of Broly, just because he has hacks, energy of destruction, Hawkeye, etc. And we don't know for a fact because it's not a solid feat, but we can definitely claim that they're weaker than Jiren and the others. Now the next tier is going to be characters that are approaching the level of the God of Destruction. The first character is going to be Frieza. Frieza took a bullying from Broly for over an hour while Goku and Vegeta tried to fuse. His performance was overall better and he took more hits than Goku and Vegeta, so Frieza would definitely be at the top of this tier, and he got stomped by Broly, so he's definitely not competing with Broly or Beerus. So Frieza starts off this tier at the very tippity top of it. The next character would be Goku. Goku performed better against Broly than Vegeta, his feats are just considerably better, and he's not really at Frieza's level yet, at least not by himself, but Goku is still very strong, and even the lore and scans for the movie state that Goku is approaching the level of God of Destruction, meaning he fits perfectly into this tier. Next character is Vegeta. Vegeta did not do the best in the Bull movie, he was super cool. I'm not trash talking Vegeta fans or Vegeta. Vegeta's great. However, against Broly, he didn't do very well, and his god form was getting kind of thrown around by Broly's just rage form, so it's, it's pretty evident that Vegeta is below Goku. He's not weak, but he's just not at Goku's level yet. Hopefully in the future, we see Vegeta rock it out. Then the final character, and this is going to be spicy, is GT Goku. And my reasoning for GT Goku is simply that if Gogeta and Gogeta Blue are at the same level, established earlier in the video, then logically the Fusees would also have to be relative in order for them to be relevant to each other, right? And we're not saying that base GT Child Goku is relative to the Blues. We're saying that Super Saiyan 4 GT Goku is, and GT goes Super Saiyan 4 for a Super, so otherwise he can transform into Super Saiyan 4. Now we're at the lowest tier in the video, and this is a fun tier. It's mainly just to have more characters on it, and I'll let you arrange the characters in whatever you think you believe they should be. My personal list is Kefla, 17, Hit, and Baby. Here's why. I put Kefla at the top because she fought Blue Goku. And Blue Goku wins the fight in Fighters to start the dramatic finish. But after Blue Goku wins, she does force Goku to use Ultra Instinct Omen and then gets thrashed. But she, so if you really wanted to, you could make an argument for her being stronger than Blue Goku. I'm just taking evidence we have that it really does appear to be the Blue Goku from the Tournament of Power, not the Blue Goku from the Broly movie, so it wouldn't be the strongest Blue Goku. And this isn't the Goku that's mastered Ultra Instinct or even used Mastered Ultra Instinct, because he goes into Omen and after he states that Omen is the best he can do right now. After k Flow, we have 17. Again, these two are, are the hardest to really argue between. I'm just putting 17 below. It's not really a question of why 17's below k Flow, it's why 17's above the other two. And 17's above the other two characters because he was able to injure Jiren. He hurt Jiren, he made a hole on a shirt. He, that's a solid feat for him, being stronger than Hit, who's below 17. Hit fought against Jiren, he did pretty alright but he ended up losing pretty badly to suppress Jiren. It goes below 17. And the final character, another controversial, because we're comparing GT and Super, is Super Baby 2. Super Baby 2 fought Super Saiyan 4 Goku. However, he was clearly weaker, 
so he wouldn't go in the same tier, this is why Baby's a tier below, but this is where the fun happens with the audience. Super Baby 2 goes at the lowest for me because he got thrashed by the character above him in the tier list, whereas the other characters in this tier did relatively well against the higher ranked opponents that they fought, but Baby just got flat out thrashed. He did get a temporary advantage when he went into a great ape, and Fighter shows that he can become a great ape, but it wasn't really because of his strength, it was more that Goku's form exhausted him, and Baby went to really bad tactics to force Goku to lose stamina and take hits that he wouldn't have otherwise done. Goku had to defend the planet from a super gallop gun, he was psychologically unable to just end it in one blow because he didn't want to kill Vegeta. There were a lot of elements in the fight that weren't related to raw power, so in terms of raw power, I think Baby definitely goes at the end, but the fun thing is, is that the audience gets to decide where the ranks go for them, and I'd love you to discuss that in the comment section below. Let's get a drum roll, because we have the strongest character in the game. And the strongest character is, if you haven't guessed it yet, Ultra Instinct Goku, yes. Instinct Goku is the best, not the best, okay, debatably the best, but the strongest character in the game. The reasoning is, is that suppressed Jiren is relative to the Gogetas, right? And there isn't another character that's stronger than the three characters in that tier, so Ultra Instinct Goku would just scale above. Ultra Instinct Goku is stronger than Awakened Jiren, and would definitely be stronger than suppressed Jiren. UI Goku is the strongest character in the game, debatably the best character in the game, in the community, and if you're complaining about UI Goku, please stop, got nerfed, I'm, I'm sorry about this side tangent, but everywhere I go I have to hear people complaining about UI Goku and it's just- So this is the completed whole tier list. A lot of the areas are open to debate, but I feel like the overall structure of it, specifically the top four tiers, are pretty accurate and are very defendable. Just to conclude the video, I want you all to know that this is scaling a video game, so I'm taking a game where Krillin can be Ultra Instinct Goku and trying to make as solid a case as I can for why these characters are as strong or as weak as they are. Again, Krillin can, or Yamcha can beat Ultra Instinct Goku, so whatever. But the main thing I was going with is is there any contradicting evidence that says that one of these characters should be stronger than the other? And there isn't, and there are constant connections between the game and the show. So I believe making connections to the game and the show, and connecting that to the lore, makes it clear that this is the hierarchy for the fighter's lore to us. I want to thank everyone for watching the video. I would really appreciate it if you'd like, favorite, and subscribe. And I'd really, really appreciate it if you'd give your opinion on the tier list and where you think each character should go. This, this tier list is bounded in logic, but it is open to interpretation, and I would love to see your interpretation. Thank you for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.